So what's interesting about uh, creating a super user on Heroku is that uh, we are actually going to do that in a Unix environment. So we have to give a command to run bash. And uh, then instead of using the dir command for directories, we have to use an ls command, which is you know, a Linux and a Unix command. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and run bash. And I used to teach a Linux class, so this is kind of uh, fun for me. <laughs> I know you guys are probably thinking, fun. Uh, so uh, you'll notice the prompt has changed. Uh, and it's going to look different once we are uh, running Bash because what we're going to see is the Linux and Unix prompt. We're not going to see the Windows prompt anymore. So I'm going to pause this. I know the mo moment I pause, it's going to be ready, but, but I'm going to pause while it's running. Or actually, I think I can go ahead and execute. So this is another weird output thing. Uh, it looks ready. So I'm going to go ahead. I don't know why the output here is out of sync, but if it happens to me, it'll probably happen to you as well. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do the ls command just so you can see uh, that it does give you a listing of files. Um, if you wanted a more detailed listing, you can use the dash l. That gives you a long file listing. Okay, so it gives you in in you know Unix you can get a lot more information. Uh, first column gives you actually uh, permissions that are on the file. So. Kind of cool if you're into that kind of stuff. Um, what we're going to do next is we are going to create a super user. So once we execute this command, it's going to work just like it did on our local host system. All right, so I'm going to do a username. Hmm. All right, so I have an account. Uh, and remember, you can do more than one super user as long as the usernames are unique. But that is all we are going to do. So we'll exit out of Bash, and that'll take us back into Windows. So if you remember, uh, we don't really have anything in this app yet. So what we're going to do is go over to Learning Log, and this is the live app on Heroku. And I'm going to log in using my super user account. And I'm lazy, so I'm going to save. <laughs> and so here it's saying hello to me just like before and i'm going to go to topics because i have none and add a new topic so i'm going to add a couple origami lots of possibilities with this one and let's see what would i like to learn about well i just got a puppy so i think i'm going to learn about Maltese dogs. All right, so got a couple of topics. 
And so now, let's see, I'm actually going to go in through administration. Just to show you that that works the same. So I have no entries and I've got the couple of topics. So I think I'm going to go ahead and add an entry. I'll tease. How about learn how to potty train my puppy? This is a big deal for me right now. <laughs> so we'll save and add another. Okay. Uh, learn how to groom my Maltese. All right. We'll just save that one. All right. So I got a couple topics. Uh, let me go into entries again. And this time we'll do one for origami. Create a lovely paper swan. Okay. So we can see that uh, this whole section works just like before. Okay, and if I want to get out of this section, okay, I'm still logged in. And I've got uh, my topic and my couple of learning entries. Next up on our agenda, uh, we are going to do a more user-friendly URL. Although I do really like Limitless Plateau. Uh, we are going to change it. Maybe I'll call mine Limitless Learning. Uh, so to create a user-friendly URL, this is once again, we are going back over into our good old command prompt. So this is the command. Okay, and it's uh, connected to your current app. So when you say Heroku apps colon rename and you give it a new name, that is going to be the name of the app. Now these names do need to be unique. Okay, so if by chance there was another one out there with the same name, then uh, you would not be able to call it that. So let's see, HeroQ apps rename. I'm going to call mine Limitless Learning. Okay, so you can see that it was successful. Okay, and so now my URL has been renamed. Now you'll notice that when I come back in here, it's got my old name, but if I go back to topics, that does not exist anymore because it's been renamed. Okay, so uh, we already covered how to open the browser in the command prompt, but you can also do this right in Heroku. Okay, so these are now my two <laughs> learning apps. And so I can click on the new one and there's an open app command right there. Okay, so it has indeed renamed this for me. Uh, moving along here, this last hands-on is just kind of got all sorts of stuff in it. Uh, what we're going to do next is uh, make our app a little bit more secure. Uh, and we are going to turn debug off. Okay, so uh, we are going to modify settings. And uh, basically what happens here is 
we are going to be setting the debug uh, variable uh, to a text string. Uh, right now, it is true. Uh, so the environment variable that affects what's going on when it's live is true. Uh, but what we're going to be doing in our settings is changing it to false. And so then it's going to set the environment variable to false. Uh, and basically what that does is it prevents uh, people from seeing detailed error messages. We want those detailed messages to display in a local host because we're testing, but we really don't want them to display in, on the live server. Okay, so uh, that is the change that we are going to be making. So we're gonna go ahead and go in to VS Code and we're gonna take a look at our settings. And at the very bottom is where we want to add this code. You can see that I already have mine. So you guys are going to want to add it as well. And just uh, take note here, I can see I need to also add import OS. So I'm going to save this. And because we made a change, now we do need to do a commit and a push. So these are the commands that we are going to be executing. Make sure you do a save. Back to our good old command prompt. And so we're going to give this a little name. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and press enter. And so you can see that it did detect that I had changed a file. And now I'm going to look at the status. Okay, so we see the status that we need. And we're going to go ahead and give the push command. And I'm going to pause a minute while it's doing this. Okay, so it says it is done doing that deployment. And so then uh, what we are going to do next is we can uh, go ahead and run a little command to set the environment variable to false. And you'll notice that it did have to restart the app and that was because we changed an environment variable and it affects how the application runs. So now instead of seeing a detailed error message, we will actually, uh, I believe, see a page not found. So. Here's the app. So if we key in something bogus here, 
that does not exist, like let me in. Um, it is saying the page is not available. This is the, what you guys are going to want it to show. <laughs> I don't think yours is uh, as user-friendly a message yet, because that is our next step. So what you guys are probably seeing is something like this. Okay, and uh, that is because we made the change to the environment variable. What it used to show was something like this, okay, where they could see detailed information about our app and we really didn't want them to do that. Okay, and the what we eventually want is for the server to show this kind of a custom message. And then we want our testing environment to give us the nice detailed message. So that's kind of where we're heading with this, just so you guys know. So uh, the next thing that we are going to do is we're going to create uh, a couple of error pages. Uh, they're short. Um, they're going to go inside the templates folder. And I can show you what those look like. OK, so uh, where is this templates folder? This is a folder you guys are going to have to create because it does not exist yet. You will notice that this templates folder is at the, the same level as manage PY, proc file, uh, learning logs, and users. So you're going to have to create a templates folder. And then inside there, you're going to create two different files, a 404.html and a 500.html. Your 404 is going to look like this. Okay, that is what you are being directed to do in the book. And then your 500 is going to look like this. So basically, they're both inheriting from the base. Uh, they've got a page header that's displaying a message. Then uh, we do need to change our settings a little bit because now we have a new location uh, for a templates folder that did not exist before. So that requires a change in settings. So under templates, we are going to enter this command. So let me show you where that is. So let us find settings. Well, I know it's here somewhere. There it is. Here's templates. And here is the location of the new command. Okay. And then you can go ahead and save that. Now, at this point, uh, we also want to change um, debug to false in settings. Um, this will let you see what those error pa pages look like locally before we push them to Heroku. So we're going to change it to false so we can see what the pages look like. Then we're going to change it back to true. Okay. So where is that that we are changing? So that's in settings, but it's up higher. Okay, so here's what it is now. I'm just going to change it to false temporarily. And I'm going to save it. And I don't need to push it right now, okay, because uh, any change that you make here locally you can see right away 
on your local server. So I just really need to start the local server. So I'm gonna go ahead. What did I call this? Deploy learning log. Nope. Deploying. Okay. And then it's learning log environment, scripts, activate, go back up a few levels, and Python manage, oop, manage py run server. And there it goes. So we'll just open up another handy tab here, localhost. And let's see. That's probably because there's nothing out here yet, admin. Oh, interesting. Well, apparently I'm not going to be able to show you that. Well, actually, this is the 500, so it is showing the 500. Uh, but that's really not what I wanted to show you yet. So anyway, we can see it's there. We will come back. Uh, it should work okay for you guys. Um, and what we're going to do, and actually I'm pretty sure, let me, let me start my other one. I have so many of these now. Let me just launch another learning log. Uh, let's see. And now we'll do the same command. All right, let's try this one. Let's see local host. That's interesting. Yeah, maybe I just have too many of these. Let's see. Run server. Let me get rid of this one. This one still seems to work. Let me see. Okay. Okay, so with this one, this one looks like it's a okay. Okay, and so this would be a normal message that we would see on our test server. And another normal message would be if we did a topic that does not exist. Yes. All right. So, uh, that would be our test system. Our production system is going to look different. Uh, what we want on the production system is something like this. Okay, or if we, let's say we did, gave it a number that does not exist. Okay, uh, well, first of all, it's a very secure system, so it wants us to log in, <laughs> which is good. We do want it to, to route that way. 
Okay, so we either wanted a page not found, or um, in this case, it normally would have uh, probably done a server error, but what you guys will be doing is routing to the login. That's a step that you guys are going to take. So let us move forward and finish off this app. So at this point, um, we are going to go ahead and push the changes. But I think to save a little time, I think we're going to change this back. Actually, no, we do want it to be false. So let's keep it on false. We'll save this. And come over here. And we're going to do a git add because we did make a change. And so you might be thinking, well, we didn't do that for the last change. Well, we have new pages and we want those pages tracked. So we're going to do the git add for this change. And then we're going to go ahead and do a commit. Okay, and so then let's do a push. Now, you, it may be showing more files on yours than mine because mine were already in there when I deployed. So let's go ahead and do a push. And I'm going to pause a minute. And at this point, it is done pushing up that change. Uh, now, in the book, I'm pretty sure they direct you to uh, change settings back to true. And um, if you have a new app and you want to see the detailed error message, then that makes perfect sense. Um, so I'm going to leave it up to you whether you want to set it to true or false, okay? Um, if you do change it, uh, you're going to have to, uh, you won't have to do an add because uh, we don't have new files, but you are going to have to do a commit and you'll have to push it back up there. So right now, if a user uh, tries to access a topic uh, entry that doesn't exist, they get a 500 error, uh, which is an internal server error. And that's actually not the error they should get, right? If, if the an entry for the topic doesn't exist, then they should get, you know, the page not found, the 404 error. So what we're going to do is edit views so that they see the 404 error instead of the 500 error. Okay, so you are going to go into views and the function that we are changing is topic. And so you're going to change uh, basically the way it's grabbing the data from the database, right? We're going to run everything through the get object or 404 function. So it's either going to retrieve the entry or it's going to route to the 404. Uh, and that is the job of this particular function. So you're going to change the topic function. And then at the top, you need to remember to add the get object or 404 function because we have to bring that in to views in order to use it. Okay, so you're going to make those two changes, save, and then, you guessed it, <laughs> we get to uh, push those changes back up.
So the author kind of leaves you to your own devices on this one. Um, so how this whole system works is that if you have a new page that you need pushed, then you're going to use add before you commit. Okay. But in this case, we're just changing an existing page. So we do not need to use add. Uh, so to help you guys out, uh, I actually am giving you the command that I used. So it's just a git commit. Um, this is the message that I gave it because it made sense to me, reroute error message and topic function. Okay, it made perfect sense. Then I checked the status. Okay, and that looked good. And then I went ahead and gave the git push Heroku master command. And you're going to want to execute those same commands. Okay, and unless I do some kind of a change in um, views, it's not going to have any changes for me to push. Um, so you will have to kind of do that on your own, execute those commands. I have them right here. And once you do that, you are done. So what do you need to turn in? I need a link to your app. Okay, so that needs to be in the Dropbox. And I'm going to give you guys the choice because um, when we do this, if you try to find it in your GitHub, you're not going to be able to find it. Okay, it's not going to be listed with your repositories. Okay, in fact, you can sort by last updated and you're not going to see them. So um, you can either push that entire project up separately, or if you would prefer, you can just zip it, okay? Just do a zipped uh, compressed fo folder and upload the folder. Does not matter to me which way you turn it in, okay? So that is what you need to turn in. Okay, so uh, hopefully this goes smoothly for you. I've done it now twice, um, and it has worked well both times. Um, I have run into a couple little snags running locally. Um, I've had errors, uh, and to overcome the errors, uh, I've had to reinstall a couple files. So I'm just going to tell you what they are in case you run into this. Uh, the first one that I ended up, I had to reinstall and it was really only one. But locally I've, I've run into some errors and so I just had to run this command again. And once I did that, uh, my local errors went away and everything ran fine. So, you know, after you go through this whole process, if you decide to make a change and you notice that on your local machine you're getting errors, uh, you might want to try running that command again. Anyway, um, let me know if you run into problems. Um, I've shown you what it looks like over here. Uh, Heroku does let you have multiple apps, okay? And it's, you just click on it, and you can open the app. Now, what happens if you have an app out here that you want to get rid of? Go to settings, go all the way down, and you can delete your app. Okay, so uh, questions, problems, let me know. Otherwise, uh, good luck, and have a great week.